the place for social gathering as well as community services. The camaraderie built by the host company has always been second to none. The spirit has also been true in sporting teams and events. Some pictures that we had there uh, that you saw back in the 20s and 30s. We have a 1917 hockey team. Um, we bounce back and show that. <coughs> show some of our sports teams. We had a basketball team as well in 1929. That's another picture that has red in it. Uh, as obviously we have an archive of our softball teams as well that hasn't won a championship since 1972-ish. Um, talked about uh, music in the fire company. Did you guys know we were involved? We had some music as part of our early history. Um, Music has always been an par important part of the host company. In the early years, the fire company had its own band. We pl they played in parades and picnics. Do you remember the band? Before you? Um, they played parades and picnics. Before 34. There was also a German band that was always present. Our club rooms were Frank Lindbergh's orchestra. Do you remember that? Um, things we would get a DJ for nowadays or throw the radio on. They had full bands for back in the day. Ray, Ray, Toll. Ray Toll's orchestra. Uh, there was always a piano, uh, and we left it when we moved as well. Many members played the violin. No, the original piano came from the third floor, and it was supposed to go down the stairs. The only thing when we came out of the out of the main hall up on the third floor, it got away from us. And it played back stairs or front stairs? Front, back stairs, back stairs. And it played music all the way down until it hit the wall in the basement. And Ira, there's your gas pump. That's Truman Gilbert. There was always a piano from what main on Main Street. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a story from Billy. Uh, I must tell you a story of Clarence Snyder. Um, he was a club member who played the piano in Brothers Tavern. Clarence went with us to all affairs and conventions playing his piano, how he loved to sing. Well, Clarence wrote many parodies uh, for our, our member Ed Shorty Mag to sing, uh, especially the mayor of Eggertsville elections, which were great fun. Um, they sang it follows, take me out to Eggertsville, Eggertsville, where I long to be, with the friends so dear to me, out in Snyder's or Waynesville stands the mayor of Eggertsville, Ward Frederick. He promises to egg on with each beer. I guess there's a tune that goes to that, but I'm not going to even try. Say it with liquor, you're bound to win the heart of the girl you love. Just carry a bottle of rye, scotch, or gin. There ain't a joint in Eggertsville that won't let you in. Uh, the music is thrilling. The flowers so sweet. The password is hip-hop hooray uh, to be a high kicker. Say it with liquor, and the smiles will come for a while. There are many other songs that Clarence Snyder sang, uh, some to the tune from, the wooden, what, from when we had our wooden firehouse. Um, as well. I won't sing the other ones. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Can throw a couple of sure. uh, During the, uh, the late 40s through the 50s and okay, it ended in the early 60s uh, when we take new members of the fire department. We had an initiation that they went through. And uh, at first, they had the, the regular initiation to come from the Fort Erie to do the initiation. Uh, later on, Ernie Johnson, Danny Crowley, and myself, we were doing the initiation. We had dancing shoes for the new members to wear. And we also had a live chip on which was uh, very interesting, and all the fellows would put on uh, female underwear and uh, go through different, different stations and do the initiation. We also were held on the third series in June, and uh, we started 
If you look at the back of the firehouse up at Main Street, where the rear or the side entrance is, between the side entrance and the back bay doors, uh, Billy Donaldson and Bob Fry and Tom Fry used to run a horse wheel. <coughs> Well, one guy was playing the horse wheel, and he had lost a considerable amount of money. So he went in the back door, and the stairway ran up to a landing, and there was a window that overlooked the back parking lot. And then it went out up to the bunk room. Now, he opened the window, and he stood on the windowsill, and peed out the window on the Billy and Bonnie and Tommy crowd. Uh, Bob Bronson, he was the, he was the head of electrician who worked for uh, Buffalo Lightning. Um, and uh, he just wandered around doing it. And he caught a couple of damn kids. You know, I think it was to get to be 16 to bring that or so anyways, they were they were stacking beer glasses and they get about six or eight beer glasses and then they dropped. So he chased them all the way up to Maine and Bailey before he caught them. Um, one other thing, I don't know if your poor father, he coming upstairs, him and him and uh, Harold Phil and myself for him on this beef and hot dogs. I don't know if it was the Jim's father's coming upstairs with his uniform on to, uh, in, order, in order to start the pit they had to have an inspection first and have a full uniform. Well, Joe was coming up the back stairs and he stumbled with a gallon of mustard. So the nice navy blue uniform that he was wearing turned bright yellow. And at the same time, Harold Filbert was slicing Kimowax. And he was holding the rolls like this and sliced them like this. So he took the knife and he sliced his hand from here to here. So he ended up over at Meyer. Uh, Harold, one of his last consultation dinners, he only had one leg later in life. And it was it's always snowing on our installation dinner night. And he was going in the front door for the dinner and his leg got stuck in the snow, but he didn't. He kept going in, so the leg was sticking out of the snow. Um, timeline of the fire alarm system, we have a separate chapter for that. 1908, a railroad tie, as we talked about earlier, was hit with a stretch sledgehammer. 1913, a bell system was installed in firemen's homes. 1916, a siren was installed in the cupola of the firehouse, the old wooden firehouse. Some fire alarm boxes were also installed at this time. If you drive around the district, there's very few. There was one on Delwood for a while at the corner of Hart, and, uh, but there's uh, a few poles left that have the red stripes on them from where the um, alarm boxes would do. So the end of uh, Cornell and Eggert, and uh, you can see the, the alarm system uh, where that used to be. A game wall system, that was installed in 1932. There were 34 boxes approximately throughout the fire district. Um, a phantom coated wheel system, as you guys see in the club room, was placed in the service. A horn was installed on the roof of the firehouse during the coming years. Uh, it was expanded and lines were extended. Two additional sirens were added. One was at Six Corners at the corner of Eggert and Miller's Port, and one was on South Eggert Road uh, by Martin Luther School, Kadima over there. 1956, the first radios were in service uh, from Amherst Fire Control. 1958, uh, desk watch was established at the firehouse and shifts were eight hour blocks. Oh man. 1996, end of audible alarms and both sirens were removed. All alarms went through Amherst Fire Control. Uh, bring it down to 2001, major upgrade in communications. Town of Amherst went to a new uh, 425 uh, radio system. 2002, we went to a radioactivated key control knock box, knock boxes and cheese vehicles as well as 
At that time, select apparatus. We now have an on all apparatus. Uh, Hey John, shoot. Speak, uh, speaking of the siren, you know that was on the Eggert Road. When Gordy would leave Argyle, by the time he got down to Eggert and Maine, the siren would go off, and he could slide his vet through sideways to the intersection and shoot over to the fire hall. And it's been seen of many a times. <laughs> I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> they, they happen a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. No okay. Stuff like that is history. Part of, uh, and, and I'm glad Gordy's here, part of uh, what we're doing in scanning all of our archives, I I've been scanning Gordy's 1970s fire prevention reports that were usually about 30 yeah. to 40 pages long and extensive. He's on Commander Tom. Um, yeah. it, was a, it was pretty substantial as far as the curriculum that you guys were doing back then. So. Captain Gordy. Um, some of Billy's notes over the years, this was his snapshots. <laughs> Um, these were his memories, uh, lest we forget the beginning, striking the alarm with a sledgehammer, the days of hand-drawn equipment, uh, the fire uh, on the second block of Caledine, the hose toppling the outhouse, uh, that's the story that Tom Merrill talked about at the installation dinner, Charlie Leadham uh, fell into the hole and then they had to turn the hose on him to wash the shit off. Um, I think we recognize pretty quickly I'm probably not going to be using any of this tape that we're using tonight, so just feel free to have at it. Um, the thermometer on the lot next to the fire hall showing the rise in contributions to buy our first truck. Uh, annual parade and picnic. Grass fires, sometimes 25 in one day were fought with brooms. Uh, trucks went off the road with power takeoff for the tank. Uh, through booster lines, a large field fire from the boulevard to Springville. Uh, we had received mutual aid. The Buick uh, burned out the clutch. The Getzville's Model T burned up and was destroyed. Okay. Is that the one you're using now? Yeah. Wow. It's not running any better. It got towed at the last day. Really <laughs> um, <laughs> barn fires, lightning strikes. Uh, lightning strikes on the alarm system, having to clear the grounds on watch. Many house fires on LeBron, Pomeroy Park. These fires were in large dwellings. Uh, the Joseph Fire, the Militella Fire. The Spang Spangthal Where was that? The Pondering. Yearly social calendar include New Year's Eve party with a fire horn sounded at midnight. The grand march from the basement to the third floor and return for Valentine's Day. Uh, 1950, fire at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Those photos that you see over in the back of the training room here on behind Don. There's a picture of the watch desk, Jeff. Yeah. With the Where? Got the game well. Oh, it's probably in the 60s if you scroll through. Yeah, it's Ira can talk about this it's probably nine, 19, 1952. Ira, the fire in the club room. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, that started uh, so in the from the French fryer and it committed at uh, about 7 o'clock in the morning. And it was uh, 19, 1953. Uh, it was in, I think it was in March. Do you have a date, John, today? 1952. Uh, we have a photo of it. Um, or we have an article, we have an article about it because it was a press release. Apparently, they printed everything back then. <laughs> I got smoke poison in that fire because it was down in the basement without a <laughs> No, not you. No, that's no, what I'm going to no, say. No, right yeah. <laughs> no, so what, what, what about you? What about the bowling alley here? <laughs> St. Leo's, yeah. St. Leo's, a, the bowling alley, right across the street from North Fairley Firehouse. That was, that was a dandy thing. Uh, okay. We brought that, we brought the uh, compressor in from the, from the highway department. They, they were trying to get in the basement and they couldn't, it was too hot. So took the, took the jackhammer and reached a hole in the ceiling. We had uh, eight people the only people, the only guys who were sober. Yeah. That, well, that good, good segue, Rick. We're going into St. Patrick's Day now. Uh, St. Patrick's Day party and parade it was attended in Buffalo in 1948. Uh, it was a morning parade. They never got back till past 11 p.m. Both dinner, both dinner and wives were cold. Um, St. Patrick's Day many years later, uh, this is from Billy Trouble again, and you guys are passing around the, the Blue Trouble book. Um, you want to talk about that, guys? That was a 
exciting <laughs> not, not today? You don't remember? I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mayor Griffith, was, was it true the mayor of Buffalo was in our rescue truck? Okay. Yes, he was. Drinking beer from our keg. <laughs> the keg you weren't supposed to bring. Roger didn't have anything to drink that day. Did you not? You didn't drink that day, did you? I was on double C for drinking probation, so I couldn't drink. <laughs> years, ago, years ago, Tom Delaney called Bill Balance and he goes, Bill, you're a fucking liar. He says, just no one's alive anymore to tell you you're wrong. <laughs> I'll never forget um, During the 30s and 40s, jobs were scarce. Uh, Groundhog Day convention, uh, sorry, the day gang, the day gang, the guys that used to gather around the fire hall. 30 and 40, during the 30s and 40s, jobs were scarce uh, and time was plenty. Several members were at the hall during the day. They had interesting discussions on the state of the economy and anything else uh, that there was to talk about around the firehouse to the city line, um, or from the city line to the firehouse. Uh, money was tight. They were always looking for, uh, for a live one. Uh, took, a took a half dollar to get a jug. Uh, Tom Daly was usually in the, was the chairman. Um, they have minutes, apparently, uh, and should have been in the Sasonian. Uh, every May, we had a St. Patrick's Day parade, Memorial Day in Williamsville. Summertime meant parades and conventions at numerous fire companies. Some wild times, and this is directly, uh, like I said from Bill, enough said, he says. Uh, how about the summer grass fires? October always meant fire prevention programs, as well as our Halloween party. December Christmas parties in the old club room. <laughs> Who could forget the initiations? They were rough. Uh, 1959, February 19th, we had a house fire on uh, 220 Ivyhurst, and the backdraft blew the firefighters Stresky and Bellinson and McDonald uh, through the front of the house. Ira? 1959, February 19th, the house fire at 220 Ivyhurst. Yeah. That's real. Actually, read the first paragraph. Billy and Matt, I was already in, I was upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, and Billy and Matt just got in the front door when she got there. Slew the two of them right out on the front lawn, and I came out the second floor window on the lawn and caught me on the right. 1961 explosion and fire on Rosedale. Yeah. Yeah, that, leveled, that leveled the house. Corner of the mine? Level. There was nothing. It went up and went down. Natural gasoline? Yep. Yeah. 1961, February uh, Park School Fire, 28 degrees below zero, frozen hose, and uh, that was the same fire, excuse me, that August, uh, later the Park School Fire in August, uh, Snyder Assistant Chief Bresnahan died. Uh, it was a hot August day. About a year and a half later, 1963, we had our fire at Sacred Heart. Uh, 1964. Excuse me. That was where Franny Pelletier, Billy and me were standing outside the back door. And here comes Franny Pelletier down the stairs and out, out yeah. the door. Balanson, Balanson, take me home. I swim with my kids. He said, I'm dancing right there. He was walking. He was something else, that Franny. That's what real fun was. <laughs> It did. I'm just going to throw this in because you guys don't know how good you got it after drills and me. Because <coughs> back when I came to the fire company, after drill was over, it was up, the main room was on the first floor between going downstairs and going in the upper It was a very small room. And uh, two of the youngest guys would have to go downstairs. And depending on the number of guys that were there, it would be what do you got? One case of beer, or do you got two cases of beer? And you've got enough cold cuts for everybody to have one sandwich and one beer. That was all. Not like today. <laughs> we still do that. Oh, yeah. 1964, we had a law clause in North Town Plaza. The supermarket at North Town Plaza, 1964. Yep. That club fire. 19, 1964, the club Sheridan fire. Coming off the roof head first on the Snyder's aerial. Um, 1967, fire on Endicott. Mrs. Dzinski burned to death. Found her on the living room couch. 
Right. 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 Right.
So he would have got it and he did he to kill himself right on the spot. Because that was all. Oh, that was so tragic. That was so tragic. And then just before that, just before that, David, his other son. That's Bobby there, Ira? Huh? That's Bobby and you, Ira, up there? Yeah. No, yeah. no, that's Bobby. Uh, just that sure. year before the beer. At our installation dinner. He was a Boy Scout. Was he was a Boy oh, Scout. Kid. Okay. Yeah. The year I'm before right. uh, the installation <laughs> dinner, uh, we had yeah. went out with Billy and Helen after the party, and they went home. What year? It was a year, about a year and a half before Bobby got killed. Uh, we had been doing this like, anyways, the phone rang. It was Billy. He said, can you come over to the house? He said, we'll be right over there. Bobby got killed in the accident. Shoot him. That's the truck. Yeah, yeah. That's it? Yeah, that was that. No, no, not that truck. No, yeah. it was the other one. That, sure. That was, that was the one. That truck like was the one that. that. It looked that like that. Jim, yeah. Ray. David got that. Jim, Jim. No, this one is still still on that. We built that one out. Sure. 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 We got in a little rush before. Right? We got in a discussion a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Funny story. We got, we got in a discussion about this truck a couple weeks ago, the 49. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that one. You um, wrote it in, man. <laughs> I know you do. So, um, the 49 Ford panel, panel van, we had gotten a discussion with, with Rick and, and Dave Stefan, I think, was there at the time. And we're like, we went up to Alaska. And we always thought that, that it had gotten an accident. It was totaled. For all these years since I was a kid, I thought I heard that that truck had gotten totaled. Well, I emailed the Alaska Transportation Museum, and they, up until recently, had that truck, and they're going to look for it when they open up for the season and send us some pictures of it. So, interesting. That truck there was the first truck to have radio, radio telephone. Radio telephone. Mm -hmm. in Western York. And that was uh, refurbished by Michael George Brown Richard. Senior and his son, George Jr. And Paul. Paul. Yeah. No. Yeah, Paul helped get, yeah. get the parts. 1977, blizzard. Uh, we sent a truck to the city of Buffalo with Ira. Uh, house stranded females at the firehouse, at our firehouse. Transported truce in the chief's car to the armory. That winter we had 200 inches of snow. You want me to interject? Sure. Yes. One of, one of the biggest fires a was a general alarm fire in the city. It was, it was in the evening. It was the Furlock Bag Factory and St. Michael's Fire, both at the same time. And uh, we got sent to Lorraine and Shenango as an engine company. And uh, Sheridan Park came as our ladder company. And it was a CD bumper from the city of Buffalo. Uh, we got, we got a call of a, of a fire on Connecticut Street of a storefront and a step-down house in the rear. Uh, we were the first engine in, and uh, Sheridan Park followed us right in, and they laddered the building, and we went in and we fought the fire, and uh, the city of Buffalo the CD bumper supplied us with water. And uh, when, when John's talking about uh, big fires that grow in Cleveland, Fire was a, a damn, that was a humdinger boy. That was, there was more hose over there. The hose was knee deep on, on the entrance to the golf course. And they had a, they had a ladder truck around the back of the, the casino. And when they started to raise the ladder up, the whole truck went right over the, right over the, right over the axle, right over the axle, and right over the running board. So I started to come away. We can see from there. What year is that? It was the same time as, as uh, uh, the one Shetland House. What year? Uh, 1972. And we used to have picnics there after that, even? Yeah. Yeah, that was. Remember, remember the last picnic we had there? When, that, when the kids were all watching the egg throwing contest? And the, the kids were sitting on the, there was, there was a sand trap there, and they were sitting on, on the hillside of it, and they were kicking their feet up and down. And all of a sudden, there was a swarm of brown bees came out, and Freddie Hamlin's little girl got stung 11 times. 
and we ended up taking her to the ECM the same day that George was going to get hit with our show? Yeah. Not at the time, the Sano had been in two at the picnic. Okay. You did. Down to the axe. Got, got two. That was full plate. Right that was full part. I got a we, We're gonna. The yeah, 80s course, is gonna be a whole separate section. Do we need a break, or are you guys okay till the pizza gets here? Okay. Um, <laughs> real quick, just dirty stories. What's that? Dirty, dirty stories. The dirty, <laughs> dirty, <laughs> the, the dirty 80s. The dirty old man there. Yeah. I don't pull you out with my nineteen seventy. What the fuck is? I want to shoot shit at the ceiling. And it did it. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Andrews. Yeah, read that one. Rick Andrews. Uh, nineteen seventy four. Yeah. Purchased the snorkel because of the uh, advent of the Boulevard Mall and development on the north end of the district. We didn't touch at all about the first time North Bailey wanted to take all the um, and then they petitioned the fire district in the early 60s to uh, um, to take the area north of the Sweet Home as annex part of theirs and were declined at the time. Greg, yeah, yeah. You guys all looked at these pictures. That was when we had two ambulances. Uh, Nelson Sumner was chief, and that was one of the big things uh, on his time. He was the chief. He was uh, he got oh, yeah. two angles. Well, we bought that house next door. Um, 1962, we sold the Brockway to Ellicott Creek for $360. 1963. Uh, Jim was talking about this. It was a special referendum to purchase 3826 Main Street um, from the from the members, uh, passed by a margin of 292 again uh, to 102. 1964, we owned property on Long Meadow between Marion and Lenore, and then we sold it. We were uh, anticipating possibly build, building a station there. 1965. The fire district took over all the expense of the building, including utilities and insurance. 1966, we decided to build a substation, acquired the, acquired the park in the area from the Boulevard Mall. Uh, we had to build station two because of ISO and the high pump pumping capacity, as well as the aerial ladder in high valued areas. 1966, we erected the fire hall in Amsterdam and Carmen with two bays. The original hall only had two bays. Um, they changed the name in 1972 from Fire District Number One at the town of Amherst to the Eggertsville Fire District. Simcoe. Simcoe. 1973, we put an addition on Station Two, uh, two more truck bays. Is that when we had the fire in the Hartford area? Yeah. No, the flood in the Hartford area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut up. It's when he's uh, brother on the right. <laughs> Who's the cowboy? Good guy fit right in with us. Who is the cowboy? Okay. I was looking for this chapter. Just one. There he is there in the right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that doing all the time. That was in the so wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, why don't we take a break and then come back with our pizza and we'll finish up in about a half hour and get out of here and tell some stories.
Oh, so that way they use good plates? You know what I mean? Oh, bad. Let me get some time. What's up, David? Uh, how are you, sir? How are you, sir? How are you, sir? You guys have been to Club Screen? What? What? You've been over to Club Screen? Amazing how many dogs are from the other it's the old tone. 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 It's the old yeah. Guys, can get beer too if you want. What is it? I know I bought one for 50 bucks years ago. I don't even know where the hell it is. It's got to be somewhere. You're getting by when the fire company bought I bought one. Dog of Thurco? Back in the day, we bought them before the fire company we'll bought take them. Our, uh, when, we, when we published the book, each fire company got 50 of them. Did you get one? One of those books? No. I had one of those. Yeah. Uh, how about the red ball gloves? Yeah. No red ball gloves around? Remember the <laughs> I got burned up on on uh, Ivy Hurst. Oh, I know. Red ball gloves. Melting on a camera. Slice. Huh? Slice of pizza. Woohoo! Yes or no? I'm coming. Right, you got some water. Who am I missing? Twenty-seven North Drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still got the badge. Do you? I got the coat up to the Salvation Army. Oh, you should have the coat. Are you kidding me? I don't know. 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 I don't know